Welcome back to another video and we're going to have a look at nature in danger and this is um, uh, uh, from the Childcraft series of encyclopedias for kids and this is volume 4 nature in danger and this book particularly focuses on um, extinction endangered species and the main reason why I want to show it in this um, in this video is because there's a good section on prehistoric life here so no copyright intended all artwork belong to their owners and this is from well this is like from 1985 and th there was a few different uh, volumes of the child craft encyclopedias and I do actually have one of them on dinosaurs that I actually did review earlier um, in the in the in the channel anyway so yeah prehistoric animals and we're not going to look at the other pages we're just going to focus on the prehistoric animals because it's really nice artwork and already we've got a beautiful cabin if you're a scene here so let's zoom in have a closer look because this is a really nice um piece of artwork there I'll just zoom in we've got all different plants we've got the dragonfly there mega something can't pronounce its name and a giant cockroach so we'll zoom back out and it's just oh we got the ginkgo tree Talking about fossils here, nothing interesting. And there's a whole section here on um, trilobites. The age of fishes. And yeah, not much color going on here, but I really do like it. Fish. So we're in, looks like the Devonian period. And this is when um yeah, you know, um fish with legs, amphibians, you know, when um, animals evolved limbs and came out of the water. That's a really nice scene too. You know, it's caught like an eel or something. Um, yeah, it's not actually having the names of the creatures here, which is a bit unusual. And I and I'll try not to pronounce names of prehistoric animals that I know that I'm going to butcher. And as soon as I said that, here we go. Got what moss traps and. Bradysaurus. I've never heard of Bradysaurus until um, having a look in this book. And again, really nice scene. Really, really nice scene. I, I like how it's um, most drops there is having a drink and they're eating really unusual creatures. The next page is my favorite because we've got. Everyone's favorite sailback, or could be second favorite sailback, because Spinosaurus is another one that's a lot of people's favorite. But my favorite is Dimetrodon, and that's beautiful artwork. Got a nice close up here, very, very reptilian in its look. So, yeah, who knows how reptile it did look. or but it's an amazing creature in here as you can see like nothing's accurate here like obviously it's kind of crouching more like a like a lizard but i think the legs were more upright as a more correct um yeah description of the animal i guess 
So really nice scene there. And a little baby one there too. And now we meet the dinosaurs and there these pictures aren't very good. And here we got a Patasaurus and Brachiosaurus, which is nice. It's a bit of a shame that it's only Brachiosaurus's head coming out of the water and that's still debated too if they if they actually went into water um like that deep. It's funny, like one one of the earlier um in earlier times, science, some scientists believed that they actually lived in water because they would have been too heavy to walk on land. So that's why I think this concept carried on from. But I do like the footprints here from Apatosaurus. And we've got T-Rex here, which is, this picture is a bit of a shame because you can't see the whole body. And we've got some pterosaurs and there yeah, extinction yeah just trying to remember, see some resemblance there and yeah like this book's like from 1985 and, you know, the birds are related to dinosaurs and that. So this book was a bit ahead of its time for for that, um, represent, that representation, I guess. Um, I didn't know about birds being more closely related to dinosaurs until, um, you know, the mid-90s or about 90s. Yeah, mid-90s with Deinicus especially. So, yeah, pretty interesting to see that. Oh, yeah. And fossils all around, and we don't have much about um, prehistoric mammals, but we do have some ancestors of the elephants. And I'm not sure if that's actual. But that, that, I think that's an extinct species. This is like half zebra variant. But anyway, um, obviously the data is extinct. And I won't go through the rest of the book because it's just mainly um, endangered animals. Um, and so forth. That's a pretty nice picture of Tasmanian wolf. That's the Tasmanian tiger, which is extinct. So. And the sea cow that's extinct as well, and yeah, the passenger pigeon. So I won't go for the rest of it. Uh, we'll just see it for the for the prehistoric life, and yeah, like a good chunk of the book is on prehistoric life, and I just want to show the artwork because it is really nice artwork. And who's the illustrator? Does it have it here? Um, doesn't have a name, but anyway. Um, yeah, so this edition is from 1989. So, yeah, um, really good to see that. And I, when I saw this book, uh, I wasn't going to look through it. I didn't expect there to be prehistoric life in this and the book to talk about um, earlier extinction events. So this was a good little surprise and Please let me know if you've um, read this one. Good chance you may have because the Childcraft encyclopedias were pretty popular during the 80s. So I'll see you all next time.